nasty old fucking place. Speak, speaking of <laughs> nasty old place, start with uh, we got some more questions, Joe. Ronnie's gonna ask you some questions, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions. I got a list of questions for my brother and his wife. Watched your show, and they got a they got a list of questions here. Start off with a uh, Rod. Rod. Any more good stories from the Air Force days? Nineteen eighty, there was no regulations in the Air Force. No drug test, no piss test. <laughs> All the people in the shop, the machine shop, fabrication shop, welding shop, all older black guys. Officer Daniels, Officer White, Officer Jackson, they were master sergeants, and they all were marijuana guys. They had a minister dress can to take them out, or break time. So it was wide open. And when the, I was on a cargo plane base when the, with the big C-5, biggest plane in the world, and these guys would come over, come back from Turkey with hash, and they'd go in Spain, they'd come back with bottles of wine, and I lived in the barracks with them. So that shit would come in the barracks, and then Friday night we're partying. You know, I got wine from Spain, I got a block of hash in there, because it's a two by four, you know what I mean? Cut some of that off, gave it down. And that's barracks life in the military back in the 80s. Women coming out of the shower, some dressed, some not dressed. It was wide open. It was wide open. In every room you went to, a guy, this guy was from Arkansas. He'd be listening to that shit. Bang, slag it, bang, slag it. The guy, Woody from North Carolina, was Motown. Smokey Robinson had a young boy here. He was like an acid rocker. I was a classic rock. And Manny Hernandez, he was into like Santana. So it was, it was multicultural, multi-party. Yeah, it was good. Way back when. Describe this place and maybe a little of what they do here to the people that don't know. This is a steel processing scrap, one of the last ones in the state of Maryland. We used to dominate with all kind of industry in steel. Big Mighty Bethlehem Steel, Easter Stainless, Armco Steel in Baltimore City, Raymond Steel, Thompson Steel. We have many mills here. There's nothing left down in this area geographically that does this but AMG. And it takes like 30 men to make a little ingot. You go back here and look at that. Oh, there's one guy in there melting it. It starts from one end of this mill and goes to the other. And it takes some damn good men to do that. Operators, millwrights, production men, everybody. So, yeah, this is. One of the last in this area. I'm, I'm barely hanging on here. I got 39 strikes on me in this place. One more strike and I'm out of here. <laughs> so I'm probably the worst employee. Pathetic. <laughs> so you've been here 60 days, you done missed 40. Yeah, I got 20 in it though. <laughs> Three weeks. That's all they're, that's all they're getting. That's all they're getting. <laughs> That's all I get. <laughs> John Wayne or Clint Eastwood? Who? John Wayne or Clint Eastwood? Ooh, that's tough, but I go with the dude. Gotta go with the dude. John Wayne. <laughs> How many words can you type per minute? <laughs> Horrible. Very bad. <laughs> I can't even. It takes me. A long time to do a little text message. Hi, sweetheart, of the old lady. It would take me about three and a half minutes. <laughs> my hands are arthritic. I'm not phone savvy. I'm a dinosaur from way back when. You'll see some guys can go down the road and text with one thumb. I've seen them. 90 words a minute. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'll be home. Yeah, you got my underwear press in. Hey, I, I got to take and look. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not a good area for Joe. <laughs> Not one of my finest areas. <laughs> What's the secret to happiness? Good eating, good drinking, good friends. Happy eating. All right. If 
you could, Joe Diesel, if you could live anywhere else, where would it be and why? I'd have to say somewhere around the Italian Riviera. Over in Europe. If that's in uh, Italy. I'm into history. They got a ton of history in Italy. They got some old buildings. They got the Parthenon in 2002 year, 2,200 years old. That building's still used today. We built houses in America in 100 years. We're tearing them down. The Parthenon is over 2,000 years old. And that's the one that goes up. It's got a big hole in the middle. And that's in the sunshine. They use it to this day. So I would have to say definitely somewhere in Italy, probably down by, by the... Italian Riviera because it's right on the Mediterranean. You got beautiful women, you got beautiful boots, beaches, and you got excellent food over there. That's home of the pizza pie, for God's sake. Um, I would have to say that. Why do you why do you refuse to call Roger by his government name? Because it's not a big deal. I've known the man. Years we worked together years ago. He don't care. Like when look at all the names they call me. Joe, old man, Joey D, Knucklehead, Sparky. How many names I got? Wingnut. Huh? Wingnut. Remember that? Wingnut. 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 I mean, uh, yeah. Hey, Mo. I mean, anything. So that ain't a big deal. Gotcha. What is the greatest band that you've ever seen at the Heritage Fair that isn't Crack the Sky? These are coming from my little brother. Mark Farner or Grand Funk. Mm. Mark Farner, and then second was uh, the lead singer from Molly Crew had a band, Vince Neil. Yeah, I remember that. They were two of the best shows I've ever seen. And I mean, they got Farner, they got Steppenwolf, the guests who all of my life, but Grand Funk and Molly Crew. That yeah, was at the Heritage Fair. Yeah, they kicked ass. Joe Diesel. What do you remember about the MLK and JFK assassinations? No, I don't remember JFK because I was 63, I was two. Uh, Martin Luther King was 68, I was seven. Kind of barely remember that. Kind of barely remember uh, James Earl Way catching him on the ball stuff big parking lot from that hotel. He had a high-powered rifle with a scope and shot that man. Wasn't fair what they did to John F. Kennedy riding in that. They, they still don't know what happened to that man. He got shot from behind and he got, he took it, then his head was snapped back like somebody was right beside the car. So, you got experts debating that, but, but I was too young to remember that. Beatles or Stones? That's hard, man. That's very hard. That's hard, man. Come on. Love the Beatles. I, 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 I have to go with the Stones. They're incredible. Just a, that's just a hard question. That's a hard question. They're two I've different. Seen the Stones twice. Love the Stones. I seen them once when they were all whacked out right. in 78 in RFK, but then I seen them like in 05 or 06 at the Civic Center, and they all cleaned up, and they kicked ass for an old man, for an old man. And they were awesome. Did you ever see the Beatles? No. Yeah. So my brother seen uh, Paul McCartney and Wings at the Capitol Center. So it was excellent. What do you think... What do you think about dudes that think they are women? About who? Dudes, what do you think about dudes that think they are women? Oh, dudes go with the fucking, uh, what do they call them? Transvestites. <laughs> oh, I mean, that shoot them in the head. <laughs> no, I, I don't know, no, no, I don't go around that stuff. <laughs> Way too old school for that. <laughs> Hang them or shoot them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes you sick. Now you're going to be able to eat my lunch. Next question. All right, next, next, next. Yeah. All right. We don't want to do that. What do you think about kids these days? 
About who? Kids. Kids? Oh. Five, five in my family. Thirteen nieces and nephews. I like kids. They have the problem with kids. Especially if they're well behaved. Um, I beams are girders. I beams are usually in the shape of a column, like an eight inch I beam, 10 inch I beam, 12 inch I beam. Girder always reminds me of like a crane rail. We got 32, 36 inch girders here. Down Bethlehem Steel, they have 48 inch girders. That's high, that's bigger than a column. And then the BOF with the 500,000 pound crane, they had six foot girders. I'm well aware of them. So, uh, like a big girder, but you gotta have that column, you gotta have that beam to hold up the girder. So they're both good. What's your favorite TV show? Uh, Antique Roadshow. They give all them prices on that stuff. Somebody finds something in the basement. Now it's worth $700,000. Now he's got 30 people knocking at the door. He's been their family he's never even known before. Hey, I seen you on TV, Bill. Hey, you remember me? All right, uh, you ever watch Gilmore Girls? Yeah, yeah, that ain't too bad. Uh, my girlfriend watches them. What do you find so boring about bowel movements? <laughs> it's just unproductive. I'm a high energy guy. I'm gonna be building something. Right, right, right. Name the number one person that you would like to send in questions for you. Number one person that would, that the, would question me? To send in questions for you. Who would you want? Number one person that you would want to send in questions for you. Oh. Mm. Those are hard questions, man. <laughs> these, these ain't fun no more. <laughs> I got a headache already. Uh... She's my favorite person. Probably Anne Margaret. Who's that? The old movie star. Ah. Redhead movie star, played in Grumpy Old Men as the old lady across the street. She was a dancer. She had a love affair with Elvis Presley. She was one of the best dancers in America back in the 68, 69. And Bob Hope <laughs> took her on all the tours of Vietnam and she went over there and danced and sang for the troops over there. Why, why her? Drop day gorgeous, talented, easy to look at. And I like brunettes. I'm a brunette man. Blondes are okay. Really ain't a redhead man, but she's drop dead gorgeous. That's an exception. That's an exception. Oh, yeah. That's it? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, all right. Uh, whoop, whoop. What, time, what time is it? What time is it, Joe? All right, that's what he's got. He's got a nine-inch tread. He just went right on in. Mine go in a little bit because it's an 11 inch setup, but you gotta have at least nine inches when you're finished. What time is it? 11, uh, 1034. Ten seventeen. <laughs> We're always close. We're always close. <laughs> Getting there. Hey, that kid's working out good for parking. He's good, he's a good kid. Yeah. And you can do damage back there. Swim a little old off, but I was getting used to them. Yeah. yeah. I was getting you a little rough at first. A little rough on the edges. A little rough on the edges, but I was, I was getting used to them. He was getting used to them. Because look, Rod, it ain't like you're out setting iron. You got somebody here, you got somebody you know, 40 foot over there all day. You work back in that little bay. This is it right here. So we're close quarters, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to brush your teeth, you got to put the odor in on. I want, you know, I want no motherfucking age going in there. Now, then hey, Slim just had two teeth. And one on the bottom, sticking out straight, like a gin pole. And then the other one coming in sideways. That looks like a 36 Buick, I really had. But I was getting used to him. I, I, I couldn't hear him actually. It was hard hearing. He had that bus. Oh, no, no. What was that? Give her. Who do you want me to do next, buddy? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, we'll find something to do. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's the reality. What's happening now? 
Yeah. <laughs> Lynn's on a six o'clock news last night. <laughs> <laughs> you see this man? Beware. That's all right. You got 37 strikes. Yeah, I got two more about that. Yeah, two more at this show. You just you just give them like two good weeks, and then and it's start new. You know what I mean? Don't forget all that. It's almost September. Hey, in a couple of weeks I'm gonna file for a job. Right <laughs> like there, you know what I mean? I'd like to work right out to there, so the checks just keep on moving. But if there's, a little, if there's a little slump, there's a little slump. Okay. I remember the first day they hired you. What? How long you been here? How long? Four months. Well, five months. I remember the first day they hired you. First day I met you. First five minutes of talking to you, you were telling me. You said, Kev. You said, you're gonna retire in November. <laughs> the first. First five minutes, we, they just hired the guy. <laughs> they retired. And Mike started the day before me. Yeah. yeah. Mike started Monday. I started Tuesday. Yeah. And before that, they were there. You didn't have many guys here at all. It's me, Steve, Tom, and Justin. And they got Mo. We got Buddy. Mo. <laughs> you got one. You got one old timer. You got one young guy. Which is good. That's a good thing. All right, Jeff. Probably gonna stay a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll stay a while. Nah, he's pretty Roger. steady, too. I'm retired. He's steady. We put some steel up on fucking North America. We put some stairways up. We took some fucking machines down, scrap and shit. But that man over there, I mean, he's not my favorite guy, but he'll take any job, eh, Rod? Any job. He's got the equipment. He's got the men. He got some nice equipment over there. And a nice shop. I like that shop it is. Got a fabricated table in here. Must have been from here to that tank, about 10 feet wide. You get three or four guys in the corner. To, you had the TIG welders in there. We had TIG welders, we had structural. So he had a nice setup over there. Got good trucks, got good machines. And you look at his equipment, it's all kept. Pretty, pretty fine, man. Yeah, I mean, pretty fine. I started with the old man, Bruce. I really liked him. He was an engineer from North of Charlotte to find me. And he retired to Jamaica and never quit with me. I never got along with him. Did you? All right, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, buddy.